Hi, I'm Mark Hope and welcome to Swift Almanac. In our last lesson, we set up our APNS server and in this lesson, we're going to configure the client software to firstly register to receive remote notifications, then we need to handle how to display those notifications, and finally, we need to cover how to send an APNS notification request. This is all going to be very generic, but when we do the Swift Almanac My Channel app, you'll see a lot more detailed code and you'll be able to upload the app and receive remote notifications on upcoming tutorials. So let's have a look. Okie dokie, so there's three or four things that we need to do to get notifications working in our application. And the first thing we need to do is we need to go into our uh, project and select capabilities. And then where it's got push notifications, we need to turn that to on and uh, it'll add the push notification feature to your app ID, etc. Um, so that's all that needs to be done. Uh, now, Apple has revised their notification types, and so now they have these custom notifications, and that is all handled in a different way, and that is beyond the scope of this um, tutorial. We're only doing standard uh, notifications. Okay, so the first thing we need to do uh, is we look at our app delegate. We need to add this import user notifications, and you might recall uh, back on our server side, there was this uh, device token. Um, so in our uh, did finish launching with options function, uh, we have these um, these three lines of, oh, sorry, five lines of notification code. So the first thing we need to do is we need the uh, request authorization. So that's that, uh, you know, your app would like to send you notifications, yes, no and uh, we pass the kind of not notifications that we, want to that we want to send to our client, badges, alerts, and sounds, and then uh, we're gonna be returned either an error or what's granted. Now, I haven't added in any code here um, to, uh, you know, to, to handle cases where we've requested badge, but it hasn't given us badge, that kind of thing, um, but uh, you need to do that. Um, now, the next thing you need to do is, with your application, you need to, and applications up here, um, you need to register for remote notifications. Um, and so that's telling Apple that uh, you are um, a device and uh, basically need to get a device ID. And, uh, well, um, this function is going to return either um, you're successful or you're not, and we'll get back to that in a minute. Now, the next thing you wanna do, um, or potentially need to handle at some case, is you need to remove um, all delivered notifications. You know, on your phone, you get little numbers, one, two, three, four, five, next to messages that you haven't read. Uh, well, this function will uh, wipe all of those. There is a, uh, another equivalent where if you give every message an ID, then you can just remove the specific IDs and so it'll decrement the ones that you've read. So if you had an email client, for instance, and it said you've got uh, five unread messages and you only read one, then the number should go back to four. But if you remove all of the delivered notifications, then your number's gonna go from five to zero, even if you haven't read them. Then the next thing we want to do is Notification Center is using the delicate model. Uh, and so we need to register our application delegate as self. So that's all that's required in the app delegate. Uh, however, we have created an app delegate extension and to handle all our delegate calls. So, uh, and this is just in our app delegate plus Windows file. Um, so the first thing we need to do is uh, when we've called the uh, register for remote notifications, I said it's got, there's two cases. So those two cases are, um, we were successful and we get this device token back and we need to convert the uh, device token that's sent to us into a string that we can use and that's the source code to do it. Um, and then we save that under our user um, and that device token 
it, it's that it, it it's valid until it's uh, it's changed. So you can save that, and then if someone closes the app, well, they're um, they're still going to get notifications um, because that's linked to the device, not to the app. And then uh, this thing did fail to, or this method did fail. This thing, this method did fail to register for remote notifications with an error. So there's some sort of error. Um, well, it says we should really display an alert to the user saying there's some error and we can't send you notifications. But for the time being, we've just got a print statement. And then the other things we need to handle are uh, if we've actually received the push notification, then uh, we've got our application, did receive remote notification. We get this data that comes back as a dictionary and the dictionary will basically say, well, if it's a, um, if it's a notification, then we'll get a message and then the type that we're getting, we're going to send an alert. So um, if it's a type of alert, then we need to display an alert and uh, basically just display that on the screen. Now, this is the case, did receive remote notifications, when our app is not um, the front app. The, uh, there's another case where, um, uh, so this is the case where uh, our app receives a notification and it's in the background or it's uh, not not open at all, but anyway, it's not the front application. Um, and then there's this other function which says, well, what do you want to do if your um, if your message or your notification occurs while your app is actually the front application? So you might want to just display an alert and a sound. You might want to do nothing um, if uh, if someone's uh, in a situation where your app's already open, then they might already be aware of what's going on. Um, there might be an update to the interface so that they can see. Um, but in any event, there's two situations. And then uh, the third uh, situation here is um, if you've uh, received a response, then you might want to do some sort of uh, navigation or something. So if, if there's been a change, you, want, you might want to automatically take someone to uh, a different screen in your application. So you can look at also doing that. So that's basically all you need to do. Obviously, this did receive remote notification, depending on the kind of notifications that you're sending, alerts, badges, sounds, etc. then whatever you're doing in here is going to, uh, to change substantially. Um, and uh, yeah, so basically we'll look at that when we do the actual application within the code and then now I've got this notifications thing. So this is the um, this notifications class or the notify class. Um, and this is how we talk to our APNS server and how we get this over to um, uh, our APNS server that we looked at in the last tutorial. Uh, so we've got this device token, which we got on initialization. And we've got the uh, message that we want to send to someone. And it's pretty straightforward. Um, we've just got this method called send to APNS. And uh, well, we've got this request string. And it says, production, are we in production mode? If so, use the production string or use the sandbox string. This should really be called URLs because we're sending it to a URL. Let's change that. Um, okay, and uh, and then we have our uh, parameters. So we've got a token, which is our device token. Uh, we've got the message, which is the alert that we want to send to someone. And we've got our app, which is our bundle ID. And we just send a simple LMO fire request. Uh, it's a get request and we pass our parameters. And it does our URL encoding for us and we wait for a response. The response should come back 200 unless our server is down. And then we just print that response so we can see what's going on. Uh, now, if we look at our constants, because that's where these details are. So we've got our K bundle ID is equal to our bundle.main.bundle identifier. And that's a, uh, 
an optional string, so we're forcing that, but will always exist, uh, obviously, um, and that's if we, that handles the case, if we actually change our bundle, if we change our bundle identifier, then it will automatically follow through in the code. And then down further here, we've got, are we in production, uh, Boolean false, and I need to put a fix in my code. Um, and then we've got our production URL and our string, sorry, our sandbox URL. And these are, um, we set them up in Cloudflare. We set them up in Cloudflare <coughs> um, last time, uh, apns.swiftalmanac.com slash send.js. And sandbox URL is just apns-sandbox.swiftalmanac.com slash send.js. So when Boolean is false, uh, what this, so when production, uh, that Boolean is false, we're going to, let's just build that and get rid of the errors. Okie dokie, so now I've cleaned it and rebuilt it again, and it works fine. So uh, essentially our request string or our request URL, let's change it, that one to URL, it's gonna do the same thing again. Um, our request URL uh, is going to be sent, these parameters are going to send it to our server, which will send it to Apple, and <laughs> uh, it'll send it to Apple, and then Apple will send it to our device. So that's how it all works. Uh, look forward to seeing you soon. So that's how we register for remote notifications, and how we send and receive them and uh, display them. I'll be putting this framework into practice in the Swift Almanac channel app, so check those tutorials out for more detailed explanations uh, and to see a complete implementation. Don't forget to click like, and in any event, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any awesome tutorials. Looking forward to seeing you soon. Cheers.